All right, so get this analyzing crops from space. From space. Yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. I mean, it sounds like something out of a movie, but this is real deal precision agriculture we're diving into today. It is, and it's using some really cool technology to help farmers get a better handle on their fields. So how does that even work? Are we talking like satellite X-ray vision here? Not X-ray vision exactly, but we are using satellites to get a read on plant health. Okay, hold on. Back up a bit for me. How can you tell how healthy a plant is from like hundreds of miles up in space? So we use these things called vegetation indices. Think of it like a health meter for your plants, but instead of a thermometer, we're using the light reflected back up to satellite. So instead of just seeing green, these indices can tell if the plants are actually thriving. Yeah, exactly. And different indices analyze that light in different ways, but they all give us valuable information about the health of the vegetation. So what's an example of one of these indices? Well, classic one is NDVI, the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. NDVI, huh? It's been the go-to for a long time, kind of the gold standard. Okay, so what makes NDVI so special? Well, healthy plants, they absorb and reflect different wavelengths of light in a unique way. NDVI zeroes in on the near-infrared and red light because that's where healthy plants really show their true colors, so to speak. So by analyzing that light, NDVI can tell you how much healthy vegetation is actually there. Exactly. That's really wild. So instead of sending someone out to walk through a whole field, you can get a snapshot of the entire area just from the light reflecting off of the plants. That's the beauty of it. And because NDVI has been around for a while now, there's a ton of data to work with. Oh, so farmers can actually compare their fields over time. Yeah, they can compare this year to past seasons, see how their crops are progressing, even get a sense of what their yields might look like. Wow, that's some serious long-range forecasting. But I'm guessing there are some limitations, right? No system is perfect. You're right, there are definitely some limitations. Like what? Well, one of the biggest ones is that NDVI can struggle with really dense vegetation. Really? It's like trying to peek through a thick jungle canopy from a helicopter. You can see there's a lot of green, but it's hard to get a clear view of what's going on beneath the surface. So it might tell you if a forest is healthy overall, but you wouldn't know if there was a problem hidden deep within the trees. Exactly. So what do you do about that? Well, that's where EVI comes in, the Enhanced Vegetation Index. Enhanced, so it's like NDVI, but better. You could say that. Scientists developed it specifically to address some of those limitations we were just talking about. Okay, so what makes EVI different? What can it do that NDVI can't? So remember how NDVI focuses on red and near-infrared light? Yeah. Well, EVI incorporates the blue light band as well. Blue light? Look what my phone keeps warning me about at night. Mm, not quite. <gasps> but this blue light, it helps cut through atmospheric haze, things like water vapor that can mess with the readings. Ah, so it's like giving the satellite a clearer view even when there's a bit of fog or smog in the air. Exactly. That's got to be super helpful for farmers in certain areas, right? Like, right. say, a coastal region known for its fog. You got it. With EVI, those farmers could still get reliable readings even when NDVI might be thrown off by the atmospheric conditions. That's amazing. So not only can it see through the haze in the air, but it can also sometimes see through those dense canopies that NDVI struggled with. Exactly. That's incredible. So are there any companies out there actually using this EVI in the real world? Oh, absolutely. Companies like Pharmanaut are using both NDVI and EVI to give farmers really detailed insights into their crops. Okay, so Pharmanaut is using these indices, both NDVI and this newer EVI, but how does that actually help a farmer out in the field? It's not just about pretty pictures from space. Right, because a nice satellite image doesn't exactly tell you how much water to use or when to harvest. Exactly. Pharmanaut takes all this data from both these indices and turns it into actual advice farmers can use. So give me an example. What kind of advice are we talking about? Well, for one, it can help pinpoint areas in a field that need more or less water. Ah, so instead of just watering a whole field on a schedule, a farmer could use this data to target specific areas that are showing signs of stress. You got it. It's about being much more precise, especially mm -hmm. in places where water is scarce. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially with more droughts happening these days. And Pharmanaut, they've actually gone a step further. They've developed this whole system called Jeevan AI. Jeevan AI sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi farm. <laughs> it's pretty cutting-edge stuff. It uses artificial intelligence to analyze all that satellite data. Okay, so you've got AI looking at your fields from space. Then what, what does that actually do for the farmer? Well, 
It can provide all sorts of personalized recommendations. Like what? It could be anything from adjusting when to apply fertilizer to figuring out the optimal time to harvest for the best yield. So it's like having a supercomputer as a farmhand? In a way, yeah. And it's constantly learning from past seasons, from weather patterns, even soil data, to give really tailored advice. That's amazing. But I gotta ask, this all sounds pretty high-tech and expensive. Is this something only the big industrial farms can afford? What about smaller operations? That's a really important question. And honestly, when this technology was first being developed, it was mostly accessible to larger farms. Yeah, that makes sense. But companies like FarmNet, they're working really hard to make it more affordable, more user-friendly, so farmers of all sizes can benefit. That's great to hear. Because the goal is to empower all farmers with the knowledge they need. Definitely. So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about making it accessible to everyone who needs it. Exactly. And a big part of that is making it easy to understand and use. That's why a lot of these platforms, they're designed like apps you might have on your phone. Very intuitive. So a farmer could be out in the field checking on their crops and then pull out their phone, check the latest EVI readings, maybe even get some advice from this Jeevan AI. Exactly. It's bridging the gap between the high-tech data and the day-to-day -day reality of farming. That's really cool. Okay, so we've gone from NDVI, the classic, to EVI, the enhanced version, and now companies like Pharmanaut are actually putting this technology to work. But something tells me this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? You're absolutely right. The innovation never stops, and we're already seeing the next generation of this tech emerging. Oh, really? Like, what? What's next in the world of analyzing coughs from space? Well, have you heard of hyperspectral indices? Hyperspectral? Okay, now that definitely sounds like something out of Star Trek. What is that? Think of it this way. NDVI and EVI, they're like looking at a plant with a magnifying glass, right? Right, yeah. Hyperspectral is like using a high-powered microscope. It analyzes hundreds of wavelengths of light instead of just a few. Wow, hundreds. So what kind of information can you get from all that extra light? Well, with hyperspectral, we're not just seeing if there's healthy vegetation. We're starting to see things like nutrient deficiencies, early signs of disease, even how efficiently a plant is photosynthesizing. Wait, you can see how well a plant is photosynthesizing from space. You can. And you can see it all before any of those problems are even visible to the naked eye. That's incredible. So you're basically giving farmers superhuman vision. They can spot problems in their fields before they even really become problems. Exactly. Imagine being able to identify a disease outbreak in just one small section of a field before it has a chance to spread to the whole crop, or being able to pinpoint exactly which nutrients are lacking in the soil so you're not over-fertilizing or wasting resources. It's all about being proactive rather than reactive, right? Catching things early before they impact yield or quality. Exactly. And with this kind of data, we can start to move beyond just managing individual fields. We could look at entire ecosystems, track the effects of deforestation, even monitor the impact of climate change on vegetation around the world. This is all super exciting stuff, but with any new technology, I always wonder about the downsides. What are the challenges that come with this kind of hyperspectral data? Well, you're right to think about that. It's not all rosy. I mean, this level of detail, it brings up some big questions, especially around data privacy. Yeah, that makes sense. We're talking about being able to see the health of individual plants from space. Exactly. That's a lot of information. It is. So what's to stop someone from, say, using that data to track what a farmer is growing, maybe even try to predict market prices? Yeah, that's a real concern. If we're not careful, this technology could be used to take advantage of farmers, maybe even manipulate markets. That's why it's so important to have clear rules about who owns this data, who can access it, and how it can be used. Absolutely. Because this technology is developing so fast, the rules need to keep up. It feels like this is bigger than just individual farmers too, right? Oh, absolutely. This has huge implications for food security <laughs> globally. Think about it. A company or even a government could potentially use this data to track crop yields, maybe even gain an advantage in trade negotiations. Mm -hmm. It's something we really need to be thinking about now. Definitely. So before we even get there, we need to be having these conversations about the ethics of it all. Exactly. You know, for all the potential problems, I have to say, this technology actually makes me feel optimistic about the future of agriculture. Really? How so? Well, yeah. There are challenges, but we're also developing these incredible tools that can help us tackle some of the biggest issues facing agriculture, like climate change, food security, 
even things like reducing waste and using resources more efficiently. It's all about how we use the tools, right? Exactly. And for me, the most exciting thing is that it gives us better information. It's not about replacing farmers or making decisions for them. It's about empowering them to make smarter choices. I love that. Empowering them with the information they need. So it all comes back to data. In a way, yeah. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I feel like we've gone from the basics of how plants reflect light all the way to the future of food and data privacy. All connected. It really is. Any final thoughts before we wrap things up? Just one thing, stay curious. This technology is constantly evolving, so keep reading about it, keep asking those tough questions. Great advice. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into the world of precision agriculture. This has been incredibly eye-opening. Been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us on the deep dive. We'll catch you next time.